Nana, make her way to the stage. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. My name is Nana Abdel Halim, and as Amin just introduced me as, I am uh, from the West Bank. I'm a Palestinian from the West Bank, and I study at Monash University, which is very disgraceful to say at this time. Before I begin, I'd like to reiterate and acknowledge the land that we're, st we're standing on, which is our Wurundjeri land, that was never ceded. And I pay my respect to the elders, past and present, and any indigenous person that might be here today, and understand that our struggles are very much interconnected. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're at a time where there's so much to say, but nothing left to say at all. I'm, I'm going to try to stick to the point. It's Ramadan, we're fasting, we're tired. And the speakers before me did a really good job at um, summarizing the atrocity atrocities happening right now. But I'm going to be talking to you about an ongoing issue that's happening on campus, at our workplaces, and at different organizations and all around the world, which is the anti-Palestinian rhetoric. Right. By now, we have seen so many examples, situations, scenarios where it was OK to exhibit anti-Palestinian hate to Palestinians, allies, or anyone standing in solidarity with the Palestinian case. From my personal experience at Monash, which is a very Zionist university, as John, Ash, John Monash himself was extremely Zionist, they have built their whole identity and centered, unfortunately, their education and policies around Zionism. So even before October 7th, if you introduce yourself on campus as Palestinian, you would hear things like, that's a bit controversial, maybe don't go around saying that, or mm, I'm not really into politics, I'm sorry. And another thing I heard would, was, um, you don't know who you might offend, be careful. So this is nothing new, but we never reported it, because we always think it's, it, these people are ignorant, we brush it off and we move on. However, recently people got more excited to show their anti-Palestinian hate. It's a free speech, land and unfortunately anti-Palestinian hate falls under free speech. When I reported my harassment on campus for wearing the kufiyya and my necklace to Monash University, all they had to say is it's free speech and maybe what you're wearing could have triggered the, the reaction. Which is crazy in a context where in 2024 and in any other context blaming it on what I was wearing would not be respected or acceptable. Yay! Universities are trying to reduce this to a religious war, Islamophobia versus anti-Semitism. It is a religious war, but it's also not a religious war at the same time. We can't reduce it to just a religious war. Anti-Palestinian sentiment is real and needs to be acknowledged. They don't hate me all the time because I'm Palestinian or Muslim. They hate me sometimes either or. I'm sure many of you have seen that APAN has released a school registry um, or an anti-Palestinian uh, registry for all the students, whether it's schools or on campus, to put in any incidents they have um, experienced, which is a lot, and I know I'm not the only one going through this at the moment. So I really encourage you, if you know your friends, if you know any family members, any students, to register it, not only through APAN, but to go through the struggle of registering it to the university. They're not gonna listen to you. They're gonna try to shut you down. They're gonna make you feel disrespected, frustrated. You are gonna be talking to a wall, but you have to keep annoying them. You have to keep challenging them. You have to keep standing your ground. And you have to tell them that it is not acceptable to disrespect us, even if you are talking to a wall. Even if you're just annoying them, by the way, that's enough. <laughs> We're at a time where there's no excuse or justification to standing with a genocidal state. We're not here to protect individuals with the genocidal interests, and these institutions and organizations are going to make sure they're protected, are going to make sure to silence you, to not have any implications on them. So keep fighting. What's more triggering is that 
we know that they know what's happening in Palestine. They see the massacre, they see the genocide, they're not misinformed, they're not uneducated, they're not blind, but they're benefiting from it, whether it's socially, whether it's economically, or whether it's just to not be blamed for anti-Semitism, anti falsely labeled as anti-Semitism, because they're more scared to be labeled as anti-Semitic, falsely labeled as that, than to be anti-Palestinian and will offend Palestinians on that behalf. This discrimination isn't only in schools and universities. We see it as I mean mentioned that um, where they grant Zionists over here 75k for just being bothered by what's happening. While on the other hand, you have the funding cut and pretty much like it was explained, people are stuck in airports and funding has been cut to so many Palestinians, visas have been canceled. Yay! Don't come to us wishing us a Ramadan Karim wish. It's very cheap. Even when you can't call it Palestine, it's not the Middle East region, it's Palestine. Call it Palestine. Stop trying to gaslight us. We know your stance, we know ours. I want to end this by saying there's so many Palestinians saying we will never forgive or we will never forget. This isn't because anyone's asking for forgiveness right now. It's because in 20 years, in 30 years, in 50 years, in 60 years, in 100 years, they will come and they will apologize because you can't suppress the truth for too long. They've done this all the time, genocide after genocide, and they'll apologize after it. But this time, we won't forgive, we won't forget, because you have the ability to stop the genocide. It's right in front of our faces, it's on our screens. Our people are going through the most inhumane justices that we've never seen like before. Instead, you, these institutions, organizations, governments, cheerlead it, endorse it. Therefore, we're telling you from now, we don't forgive you, nor we will forget. If you're at Monash, follow Monash for Palestine. If you're at Unimel, follow Unimel for Palestine. If you're at any other campus, follow the Palestinian organizations, the ones that are grassroots Palestinian organizations. And if you don't have one, create one. Be a voice. Zionists, when they publish their propaganda, they don't publish it for me, they don't publish it for the Palestinians, they don't publish it for the Arabs or the Muslims, they publish it for those who are not educated enough, mostly targeting Western countries. So you showing up here is showing them that these lies, you're not believing them and they can keep posting their propaganda, but you won't believe it. This is why, show up where you can. Lastly, keep wearing your kufiye, be loud, be proud, don't accept the disrespect, stand up for Palestine today, tomorrow, and until Palestine's free from the river to the sea. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free.